Hello everybody, once again we are back. My name is Emmanuel Lore and I'm a software engineer. Currently I work at Loret Developers. Uh, so today I want to speak about uh, what next right after your graduation. So uh, as a software engineer, what exactly do you or are you supposed to do uh, immediately you finish your campus? Now, it is not yet over. This is just the, the beginning of your of your experience and your and your practical engagement to your career. Now, the big question is: Do you really expect to get a job immediately after you graduate? Especially if you are a computer science student, maybe you are an IT student, uh, maybe you are a business uh, information technology student. Definitely, outside here, things doesn't work the way we think because uh, things do work differently. Uh, for you to be, uh, to be employed, especially in the field of software engineering, uh, the most required things is uh, your experience uh, in terms of uh, your software engineering skills. The question is, are you a mobile developer? Are you a cyber security expert? Are you um, a machine learning engineer? Or maybe are you a blockchain technology expert? It all depends on where your field is or maybe where you are good at, uh, the kind of problems you can solve. Now, immediately after, after your campus, um, you can actually branch into, into three uh, main categories. One, if you have the experience in your software engineering career, definitely you can go and work on, on where you're good at. Those who are good in uh, blockchain technology, you can definitely go and look for a company where you can go and work on blockchain uh, industry. Those who are good in mobile application, Android developments, uh, you can as well go and look uh, an, an industry or maybe a company where you can practice your career. What about those students who are just in class? Outside here, things doesn't work with papers. For example, Maybe you got a first class honors, maybe you got a second class upper division, maybe you got a pass. Things outside doesn't work with your papers in the field of technology. Normally, things do work with your experience. We normally engage ourselves in problem solving, not on, on, on your area of uh, expert in terms of academics. So, um, for a software engineer, definitely, you're supposed to, if you're, if you're already experienced, if you're ready, uh, if you're well up, if you're good at solving real world problems, then you're good to go. And sure, right from the moment you join your campus, or maybe let's say right from the moment you join your first year, learn uh, from practicals. Don't just focus on, on, on academic paperwork, don't just focus on, on, on assignments. You need to also engage in the in the real world problem solving, uh, and that is where your experience will start right from there. Of course, your first year, if you venture into Android, if you venture into into, into cyber security, if you venture into into web developments, your your your, your experience begin right from that day. Now, for example, you finished your fourth year, and you have no any experience. <coughs> It will be a good opportunity for you to find a place and uh, at least learn. Uh, you need to go back to, to class whereby now you'll be doing things practically. You can either go back and enroll for a master class of a specific um, industry or else you can as well do a self-taught or maybe a self-learning, self-paced learning, self -paced learning um, um, uh, technique. You can just go maybe to YouTube, try to check on tutorials, learn from tutorials. Uh, you can as well go on the websites, for example, a uh, website like Coursera, another maybe like uh, Cognitive AI, another like Udemy. You can just go there, research on, on, on the thing you want to learn, then start practicing right from there. Actually, this will take you maybe approximately, let's say, um, a period of about one year for you to be fully conversant with a certain language. Or maybe for you to be uh, at least at least uh, a bit, okay at least a junior a junior developer in some industry. Uh, most of the companies they require people who have an experience of at least two to three years. So definitely, if you just finished your campus, 
and you've never been in, in, in any industry, uh, you still have like two years hands-on experience for you to go and do it um, on the ground. You learn from, uh, from as you've said earlier, maybe from the tutorials, learn from websites, learn from, uh, from schools. So it can take you at least two years for you to be, to be a well-equipped and experienced developer. Um, for me, um, at least I was doing some programming right from my university uh, studies. Uh, so, and most people get even job when they are still in campus. The first interview I attended, which was physical actually, I attended an interview at uh, Standard Media Group, that is KTN, and uh, that time I was I was called for for PHP Laravel developer, and actually I was uh, I was at around that year, um, and you can imagine somebody who is in that year has no has no uh, papers or anything. You are not yet a graduate, but when we went for an interview, uh, they never mind about our level of academics. What they really mind is about our level of experience, because the moment you go for an interview, you are taken to a specific room, then you sit down and you're given a task. Maybe you want to build. Maybe they want you to build a chat application. Maybe they want you to build something like a automated system. Maybe they want you to build a simple website. So that is the only interview which can equip you. Maybe which can qualify you to get a job in that company. So now. If that is a third year student, you just go with your experience. Even somebody who has never attended any class, but at least has an experience in those industry, you can qualify to get any technology or maybe any industry of computer science, software engineering, uh, information technology. The thing is, are you good at solving a specific problem? Um, so. Let's not be light that uh, you need first to graduate for you to get a job in the field of uh, information technology. Um, it doesn't require any any paper paperwork experience. And a good example is uh, the founder and the CEO of Facebook, that is Mark Zuckerberg. Actually, the guy had to drop out of his university level just to go and pursue um, his hands-on experience or maybe his hands-on uh, solver a uh, problem-solving skills. So it is very possible for everyone. It is really possible to anyone who has the interest uh, to focus on, on things of software engineering and technology. So definitely something else, uh, it doesn't matter where you, your industry is. Maybe you do mathematics, maybe you do a business uh, administration, maybe you do things like social sciences, uh, some even do education, some do humanities. Anybody can enroll to a uh, technology industry. The thing which is just required is, uh, is your, 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 your competence, also your patience to learn. Um, this industry, people are really qualified academically. Most of the people uh, are actually qualified in terms of paperwork. But in terms of skills and experiences, uh, we still have some shortage of people who are qualified um, and of course we need more people. Of course this industry requires so many people. It requires people who, who have good experience, people who can think, uh, people who can be so creative. Uh, so we really try to engage everyone just to learn and try to practice technology. And of course uh, during this century um, Everything now has shifted from the manual work to technology work. And uh, even the way st students do study nowadays, it requires at least some, some, some experience of technology. Uh, even some of the classes are being offered online. Uh, even if you attend maybe, let's say some, maybe, uh, maybe for example, you go for hospital. Nowadays we have what you call the management systems and the EPR systems which they work to, to ensure things run smoothly. So it is required and also it is a basic thing for everyone to enroll and at least have some knowledge in technology. Lastly, I want also to speak about, I want to speak about 
what are the basic requirements for you to get a job in the field of technology or rather in the field of computer science and software engineering? Um, if you go and look for, maybe if you go and search for a job online, uh, we have some, some platforms like the Flexi, which can help you to get some jobs which can link you to, to your industrial job. Uh, also, we have some, some websites like uh, job, job Search. Uh, we have another one like um, Indeed.com. So there are so many websites you can go and apply jobs. But every time you go and search for a job, definitely there are things which are, which are a key. We have what we call the responsibility area in the job search. We have what we call the requirements. And we also have what we call the qualifications. When you go to the qualification panel, you definitely see uh, at least a BSc in computer science, at least a diploma in computer science, maybe at least a certificate in computer science. So this means at least it is the least thing you should have. It is not really a requirement, but it is the last, like it is the least thing of all you're supposed to have uh, for you to qualify for that thing. But now, uh, we have what we call the qualifications. Qualifications means, or maybe the requirements, not really qualif Okay, uh, there is a difference between qualification and the requirements. Qualification means what you need to have at that moment. And also requir requirements, or qualification means your academic paperwork. But now the requirements means the skills you're supposed to have. So for the qualifications, normally they ask for at least a BSc, at least a certificate in in C CCNA, a certificate in CompTIA, certificate in, uh, let's say, at least um, certification in uh, maybe Azure, uh, certification in, in uh, C+, maybe a CompT, uh, maybe A++. So those are just the qualifications, which are not really important. But now, the requirements. The requirements. You'll realize, mostly they'll quote for you. Maybe they'll say, requirements uh, two to three years experience in HTML, uh, PHP, Laravel, maybe Python and others. <coughs> maybe some experience in cloud computing, uh, experience in uh, Microsoft Azure, experience in, um, uh, uh, yeah, experience in, uh, in, in let's say Node.js and maybe experience in a front-end language like AngularJS, uh, Vue.js, uh, maybe ReactJS. So these are the key things which you need. Apart from the qualifications in your papers, apart from apart from you being certified in some paperwork, the key responsibility or rather the key requirements are do you know these languages and what experience do you have in that industry? So I really urge everyone to try much possible to engage yourself in a lot of practicals Engage yourself in a lot of uh, a lot of research, a lot of uh, tutorials on the internet. Also, these short courses, which are so practical, uh, that is the only thing which can help you to to achieve, or rather, to meet the requirements of a software or maybe a computer science, uh, engineering job skills, maybe job requirements. Um, I think up to that moment we are good. Now you can go and uh, just do what we've said. We've said that for you to get a computer science job, your degree is just a, a basic thing, though not a requirement. Your degree is the least of all the requirements. The most important is your experience in the industry of IT. And the requirements means that you need to have um, knowledge on some, some programming languages, cloud computing, uh, Microsoft Azure, yeah, and uh, those tools you need to use for you to do the programming. So anybody, whether you are qualified in terms of paperwork or you're not qualified in terms of paperwork, uh, but if you have the knowledge on how to solve certain problem in the field of technology, then you're qualified. There are thousands and thousands of people out there who are working in Safaricom, some are working in Google, some are working in Yahoo, some are working in, in, in Amazon. But these people, 
are experience uh, experience fed but in terms of qualification they are not qualified in terms of paperwork so i encourage you to do a lot of practicals programming and also a lot of uh, research in terms of in terms of uh, the requirements so i i also want to finish by saying that uh, anybody who is uh, who is in maybe let's say first year in your university maybe your second year in in campus third year in campus it is also good for you to start searching for job requirements go check on which are the requirements to get a job in a specific industry what are you supposed to have for you to get a job in a specific industry so that once you know what are the requirements you can now start working on on those requirements as early as now so that by the time you graduate you already met the experience number of years needed in that industry don't waste your time at that point we are good let's meet next time please you can just watch uh, you can share to your friends you can as well subscribe and also uh, you can comment you can also put a comment and we'll be ready to answer you any question so in case of you, in case you have any question just put that question on the comment section and we'll be giving you feedback right in the next channel At that point let's meet next time